The boy who lived is perhaps one of the most famous lines of modern literature today, Harry Potter. Now before we move on, I'd like all of you to help me. I want to build a character with all of you. And what I'd like you to do is, I'm going to ask a set of questions. If you agree with it, you raise your hand. If you don't, you don't. First question, is this character a male or a female? All those for male, can I have a show of hands? All those for female, can I have a show of hands? Female wins. Next question, is this character a one that studies at a university? Or is this a character that stays at home? All those for studying at a university, raise your hands. All those who say that she stays at home, raise your hands. She stays at university and she studies there. Third question, is she struggling in university or is she passing everything with a five? Is she struggling in university, a show of hands? Is she passing with a five? Passing with a five. And last, is she constantly worried that she might not do her best? Or is she sure that nothing is going to stop her at all? All those who say that she does worry that she might misstep her success, raise your hands. All those who say she's completely fine with everything and she's never going to misstep at all. All right, so this is our character for today. A female who's at university, is doing really well, but does have an insecurity that she might not do so. Before we go on, I'll be presenting five characters for analysis today. And to get you all in the mood, and get you all thinking about these characters, let's watch some videos. So, the first one. Game of Thrones. Show number two, book number two, movie number two is... Number three. Um. Mr. Spock. Star Trek. Number four. Well, the truth is, these little babies sell themselves. They're super fun. Brooklyn Nine-Nine. And the last, and please don't kill me for this one. Two. About a cadaver. <laughs> Harry Potter. Why these shows? And let's get to it. Game of Thrones. Jon Snow. The bastard of Ned Stark. Lord Commander of the Night's Watch. The White Wolf of Winterfell. Overall good guy. We love him as a character, but yet, aside from his noble qualities, there are other factors to him. We've seen him stay at the Night's Watch when his entire family were getting slaughtered by the Lannisters because he was bound by honor. We've seen him die and come back to life after he was killed by his own men. We've seen him lose the woman he loved as he protected the Night's Watch. Show two, Darth Vader, previously known Anakin Skywalker. The prophecy said he was the chosen child. He would bring balance to the world. And yet, he succumbed to the dark side. 
And he did it for what might be a noble reason, to protect Padme, as he thought it would be the best way. But in the end, she did die. Spock from Star Trek, show three. Spock is a character who's half Vulcan and half human. And people, as a, when he was a child, people would bully him about it to get him to show his emotions. He's seen his own species get decimated to a mere number of 10,000 and become endangered. He's killed his own friend or was tricked into it to save his own life when he had to do his mating ritual. Show four, Jake Peralta, Brooklyn Nine-Nine. Jake Peralta is a cop who has abandonment issues since his father left him and his mother at the age of seven. He's also a character that cannot express his emotions properly. He does it by cracking jokes. He's a character who's got a fantasy that he's going to end up with a girl who broke up with him at the age of 13 at the end of the day. And the last one, Cerberus Snape, Harry Potter. That scene of that part in the book made him one of the most hated characters in the Harry Potter fandom. Book seven, however, brought a complete turnaround. When J.K. Rowling reveals to us why he killed Dumbledore, Dumbledore himself requested for it. We see how he was bullied by James Potter and the Marauders. We see how he loved Lily Potter. And we see Lily end up with James Potter at the end. And their son finally, Harry. Why are these characters and why are these shows the ones we always go back to, aside from all the others? It's because all of us have made some sort of emotional connection with them. There is always one character that you like, that you personify yourself onto. And writers have figured this out, which is why every good movie you watch Every good character that you've ever seen played on stage, every character that you've read and you remember, has some sort of event occurring with them. It could be in the past, it could be in the present, or they're being set up for one. And the emotions that writers evoke in us are ones of despair, are ones of hope, and most importantly, are ones of sympathy. It's perhaps why most of us are waiting for Sherlock season four to come out in January, or why all of us are queuing up to go watch Fantastic Beasts, or when we're finally waiting to see what comes of Daenerys Targaryen and Tyrion Lannister in season seven. But why am I talking about all these characters? Why am I bringing up fiction? And how is it related to any one of us? So I'd like to tell you my story. December 26th, 2004, I was visiting Sri Lanka. The previous night, I was celebrating Christmas with the locals. The following morning, everything is dull. Everyone is sad. Everyone is drinking and crying at the same time. And I, at that time, was a boy of seven. So I go and ask the driver who was responsible for bringing me to the hill station candy where we were. What's going on? Why is everyone so sad? We just had a party. And he looked at me and he said, how dare you ask that question? But then he realized I was just seven. So he asked me to look at the TV. And the TV just had one panel which said, tsunami hits South Asia, millions dead. And Sri Lanka was one of the few places affected by that. 
I remember my family, my extended family, trying to contact dad. And finally, when my uncle got through, he only said one thing. I don't care how much you've spent on this trip. I don't care what you've planned for this. You're getting the next flight home and coming back. So we all got our things together and we rushed to Colombo Airport. And I waited seven hours to get onto a flight. At the same time, I saw people who had lost their limbs. I had seen people who lost their families. I had seen with people who were widowed or they became widowers. I saw orphans. All with one goal right now, to get to safety. And finally, I did get my flight back home to Dubai. At the age of seven, that is what I experienced, and that is what I count as a personal tragedy. Not because it affected me, but because I saw what happened. And it affected me greatly by giving me nightmares, by making me a really quiet boy who didn't want to talk to anyone and who was ridiculed by a lot of his peers at the age of eight or seven as the years went by. And it still affects me today. It makes me inept at times to pick up social cues. And that's what happens and I offend someone unintentionally. Or the reverse happens and someone offends me unintentionally. But characters like Harry Potter gave me hope because first of all, I could project myself onto a boy like Harry who himself was closeted, who himself was looking for finding what he was worth for and deciding what he would do in life. It's probably why we all want to know what Tyrion Lannister will end up doing. It's why we want to know and why comic book characters are so loved, even though all of them have the same streak. They all have some event happening with them. Let's come back to that character we just made in the start. We said it's a female, so it's a she who studies at university, is doing extremely well, but her personal problem is that she's scared she will not succeed. And that is human. Now, y'all are a random sample. Most of y'all don't know me. I do not know most of y'all. I had given y'all two options. Some good, some bad. And even though I asked you all to choose, we end up with one bad trait or one problem that she constantly faces. And this is what writers use. And this is what we see. And this is how we make emotional connections with characters we love. I'd like to leave you all with a question. If you were to write a character that is to be world-renowned, that is to be remembered like the great characters and plays that Shakespeare and other great writers have written, how would you write this character? Thank you.